So good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us at the second day of the conference. Thank you, Analytics India Magazine and all the sponsors for giving me the opportunity to talk at this uh, stage. So the talk today would be revolving around sustainability. The, the reason why I chose this was while we have a lot of conferences, while a lot of discussions are happening around how AI is booming and how we can use AI for multiple use cases, right? But somewhere or the other, there are certain other impacts that AI also has. So through this, con through this talk of mine at this conference, I would just love to uh, highlight those pointers, and that's the main agenda of this talk. So the agenda of the talk goes by evaluation of AI, which we had a lot of discussions around, and the necessity of exploring sustainability. So if, if you would have seen the sustainability, I have tried to just mention the AI in front of it. And we will talk about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and where we as the folks who work into AI domain and who can have the poten like who have the potential to use AI for driving sustainability can explore certain use cases. And then we could uh, focus on how you can approach sustainability in your day-to-day -day use cases. So when we talk about artificial intelligence systems, we need, do not need any more definitions. But uh, like to set the context of this uh, talk, I will just focus on the few pointers which AI really revolves around. So the first is data. The second, you would have the models and algorithms that you, uh, uh, that you write or that you can think of, and then the compute. So co the combination of all these three leads to the actual AI systems that we build, and that's where, like, within these three pillars of AI systems, we can s explore where sustainability lies. So this is just a, evalu just a graph to see the evaluation of, evaluation of AI the the reality is true right like post 2015 or like even even if you talk about around 2020 onwards the revolution in ai has been huge and with evolution of ai so has the growth in computing power right the requirement of computing power has also boomed so this is the graph which showcases that the growth in computing power requirements and then similarly you see that the total compute that's being used during trainings have also increased over time. And similarly, while we are trying to use the best of computes, we also have, this, we also have seen the uh, growth in the data usage. And the, the major thing behind, uh, focus, like behind showcasing these graphs is to make you understand that the, while AI is evolving, so is the other pillars, right? Data, models, compute. This is the major important thing. What? While AI is growing, so is the compute cost. And every company wants to optimize that cost while also trying to optimize how we can use the data, how we can use the models optimally. But when we talk about all this, there are few approaches that we take while doing AI or while we are exploring certain, uh, certain approaches in, uh, in delivering our AI use cases. So first is the model-centric approach. Like usually a lot of people, including me, when I started my journey as a data scientist in 2021 at Nielsen IQ. So my, like, because I just graduated from college I, in 2021, so I had this thing that models are the only things and uh, like playing around with models is the key. But like while this helps, so this has been my realization over these years and I have myself seen that how data centric approach has really helped me optimize my data science processes and my data science self projects too. So why this data centric approach came into picture was I was trying to like I was trying to enter the Kaggle, enter Kaggle competition and uh, like I was talking to a few grandmasters and masters around this that okay how should be the approach and all those things. So they they had a very intriguing thing that data we usually do not go into the data centric approaches we whenever we see a competition it's like we have to use the best of models and all those things it's the first thing that comes in mind of at least the freshers and at least the students that have been there so we need to focus on the data centric approach and data centric approach is one of the pillars for doing ai sustainably because while we are using the best of models Definitely, we should not compromise with the quality of work that we do. We should not compromise with the quality of deliveries that we provide. But 
if we can see that within this process, if we can do something extraordinarily, or if we can do little things optimally, and data-centric approaches has helped. So we are not alone. So this is uh, the community's bias towards model-centric approach. So this, this is like a Kaggle competition steel sheets defect detection challenge where there was a baseline model that was made and baseline model had just an accuracy of 76.2%. So people tried to optimize it, people tried to see that, okay, how we can uh, improve the accuracy and all those things. So while people started using the model-centric approaches, the improvement was only around 0.04% uh, and kind of things. But when people started using the data-centric approaches, the accuracy improvements have gone to 16%. So just just the caution it's not that in every cases that we use the accuracy will improve with data centric approaches but definitely we should consider this while we are doing our ai jobs and the need for data centric approaches is this is where the actual opportunity for us lies so like when i go to mentor certain hackathons mentor certain uh, students at colleges so it's like uh, we see a lot of things already happening why well, how should i prepare myself as a student who is graduating in few years or like graduating the next year or even people who are in profit like in ai domain they want to stay updated and all those things they want to explore they want to put their efforts into certain things where they can really get the benefits and i think a lot of opportunity a lot of potential lies in the data centric approaches while like if you if you see that one percent of ai research or maybe close to five percent of ai research is going into sourcing and preparing high quality data so that's where most of the organizations are struggling too so let's focus on data centric approaches let's try to understand how in our day-to-day -day use cases we can go into using data more optimally and Trust me, while we are doing this, we are not only reducing the compute cost, like not always, but definitely in most of the cases, we, we do uh, end up uh, using a little bit, little bit less of compute and definitely like as little less compute is being used, so is the carbon emissions of the machines that's being run to uh, make those compute done. So this is the model-centric approach that we usually use, not, in, not only in Kaggle competitions, but also in our day-to-day -day, uh, jobs or day-to-day -day, day -day projects. So it's like we start with our data, we do the pre-processing, we do the modeling part, and then we go into submitting the predictions or whatever predictions we can think of uh, related to the business use case. So that's what major, majority of us start with. But when we talk about data-centric approaches, it's about iterations. It's not that you, can, you, you will be hitting the bullseye at the first point, it's about you start with the data, you pre-process it, and then you start with modeling. And within modeling, you go through a continuous loop. And that's where actual improvements in your results, actual improvements in the business use cases that you are uh, trying to work upon actually comes in. So this is, uh, like this is a real world uh, example, like this is a Kaggle competition, human protein atlas single cell classification. So we had this data, and the task was to segment the cells in the images and predict the labels of those segmented cells. So this was the task. And uh, the challenge was the labels you will get for training are image labels. So th this was a normal Kaggle competition that you get. So what happened, it's like while everyone wants to get onto the top of Kaggle competitions. So a lot of people started exploring the best of models, best of, uh, like the best of modeling techniques that they can uh, brainstorm on and all those things. So while this was happening, uh, like a solution came, and that solution came into the fourth place, uh, fourth place of this competition. And when when we see what that person or the what the team member of the team which won this fourth place uh, mentioned, so they have specifically focused on the on the benefits that they got from a data centric approach. So you would see that a solution overview they have focused a lot lot on the data centric approaches and. It's, it's not that this is true only in this Kaggle competition. There are multiple other competitions also who, where you can use these approaches, not the exact same approaches, but definitely a tweaking and with major focus on the data science, on the data science workflows, along with focus on the optimizing the data that you use. So coming to why sustainability. So while we focused on the pillars of AI systems, data, model, compute, and then we also focused on wh what are the major approaches when we are doing AI. 
So the, the point is while we are doing AI, the carbon footprint of AI ML is also increasing. I'm not telling it's only increasing for the bad causes. It's also helping AI ML is also helping reduce carbon of uh, carbon footprints. So there are multiple use cases where AI ML is being used to offset the carbon footprints, but there are certain cases where emissions from ML computation and hardware is also increasing. So we need to think of how we as the people who work in data science AI domains can take that responsibility to do AI in a more sustainable manner. And so that's the main agenda of this talk. I just want to start this day with, uh, with a hope that we all put our efforts into, into doing AI sustainably and also you using AI su in sustainable use cases. So the necessity for exploring sustainability. So it's like, this is just a graph which mentions that emissions from AI cloud instances. So when you are, do, you are making the models and you are putting that models on the AI cloud instances. So this is the emission graph that, that has been published. So if you see at the top, there are, for, there are a few models which consume energy as, as equivalent to uh, American homes energy consumption. So that's the scale at which the energy consumption is happening. And it's not that we should compromise to save energy or we should compromise with the outputs, but it, it is majorly to have that thing in the some cautious mind that we always need to focus on how we can do AI sustainably. Because while we are doing the modeling part, while we are solving the business use cases, this takes a little bit of backstage. And so through this conversation, just I just want to put that uh, put that fact in front of you that we also need to think in this direction. So sustainable development and uh, like we all know about sustainable development, like the goals that's being set by the United Nations, the 17 development, uh, sustainable development goals. And in each of them, uh, like AI can be helpful. It's not that amongst these 17, AI is helpful in one, AI is not helpful in other, or AI is only helpful in one of the 17. It's not the case. Like we have s certain development goals where we want to eradicate poverty, we want to uh, reduce the hunger and all those things. So AI definitely is being used, not at that much scale, but it has been, uh, like it has been used in certain projects that we see in the world helping drive, uh, drive the sustainable development goals. So sustainable future, is it? So is it so easy? So in order to kickstart our journey, we might scramble that, okay, where should I use uh, the AI skills that I have to, to drive sustainable development, to, to do AI sustainable and all those things. So there was a report by McKinsey, which mentions that there are 100 plus use cases where AI can be used and AI can help drive the sustainable development goals. I'm not talking about doing the AI optimally now. It's about the use cases that AI can be helpful in for driving sustainable development goals. So we all have the skills and we must explore these projects. You can go and uh, check about these, uh, these use cases which have been uh, published by the McKinsey report a few, a few months a few years ago and this has been updated also like they have come up with certain new projects. So these are a few use cases of sustainability. So when we talk about sustainability, it's not that there are use cases just on the name of it, but I have personally worked on a few of them. So this, these are uh, like the, I would be showcasing the three of them which I worked upon. So one was mangrove classification and AI was used, like I along with my teammates have used AI for mangrove classification because India is a home to very, very large mangroves and they are degrading day by day. So we have used AI for mangrove classification. You can also uh, think of how you can uh, explore certain other use cases. So this was again drone based biomass estimation. So these are not very, very complicated applications, but these definitely sow the seeds for having that subconscious thought that yes, I need to do AI sustainably. So this is the third uh, project that I did that was deforestation driver classification. And there are a lot many where even even through the bird calls, the, the audio, audio of the bird calls, we are trying to understand how the wildlife biodiversity is progressing in a certain uh, century or other, other stuffs. So there, there are multiple use cases where we can, uh, where we can think of using AIs optimally and in a more sustainable manner. So how can you approach sustainability, right? So one is through the projects that I showcased. 
like may maybe you can also think on the same lines and think of if even much better ideas that okay how ai can be used to solve certain things right so how you can use or how you can approach sustainability is first of all folks start focusing on computing related uh, the computing related activities that you do so measure your footprint of uh, the co2 footprint that you have it's not easy and it's not exactly the exact exactly accurate or something like that but it definitely gives you a direction that this is how things are progressing so i personally use uh, like there are there are few websites there are few resources which i use the first one is ml co2 impact and the second is code carbon and then there are carbon tracker and other tools which helps you track the carbon emissions that are happening or that are that have the potential to happen from the models that we are building and reduce your impact reduce your impact by choosing more efficient models so there they while we are progressing fast in ai domain so is the variety of models that we can build to solve a certain problem statement right so we need to think of how we can how we can use the efficient and the best models to solve the use cases that we are trying to uh, brainstorm upon and then uh, like it, but the but the caution is we should not compromise like whenever whenever we talk about these things it's like we, sh we should we compromise while uh, while approaching sustainability it's not we we should try our best to go into the sustainable direction but we should also have the have the thing in mind that we should not like why we are using ai it's mainly to solve a business use case so if that business use case is getting solved and we can do it more optimally on sustainably then definitely let's go for it if not then definitely we need to think of other use cases and other modeling techniques which can come into picture and do the things in a more uh, structured in a more sustainable manner second is the application related so a lot of people have started focusing on their application related uh, activities that they do so they quantify and evaluate whatever they do in their day to day activities and even even in i come from delhi so there are few groups which which are working on certain things like they they come together they meet together to discuss how they can do data science in more climate friendly ways like there is one star one society i would say climate change.ai that's not of india but that's based out of uh, us driven by some mit professors and all those things so they are they are trying to utilize they are trying to give you certain use cases where ai can be used for driving for solving climate change concerns so you can also try to use and maybe those projects can be a good starting point for you to do ai sustainably and you can also start with tracking your co2 emissions of your deep learning models with code carbon and weights and biases so this is uh, this is one of the blog that i have read and where where they mentioned that you can have a trend they, where you can have a chart of uh, of how the carbon emissions are going while you are doing the deep learning or while you are training your models so this is not something which you have to put very much extra efforts but these are definitely something which can be helpful in your journey that okay i need to do ai sustainably but where to start it's not that you have to start from scratch or you need to be a sustainability expert you need to be a person from a back with backgrounds in sustainability and how all of this so it's more about confusing the two domains ai as well as the sustainable uh, sustainable development that we have been show that we have been hearing a lot in in these terms in, in these days so i was recently at gpai summit so that's global partnership on artificial intelligence in delhi so where a lot of focus and a lot of networking talks were around how we can use ai for climate change because it's inevitable right so because ai is the tool which has the potential to help us so that's why people are trying to understand where we can put our efforts and get the best results so where you can start uh, like i initially when i started my journey i was struggling with the data sets where i should start with because these data sets are definitely heavy some of them might be satellite imagery some of them might be tabular data or something like that but these are a few data sets which i started my journey on and i have tried to uh, separate these on the basis of certain buckets right if you want to work on energy on like how you can use ai for for ai for energy ecosystem for energy domain projects you can start with these uh, data sets and then land use and then climate and earth sciences and then multiple others like there are a lot like if you want to go into wildlife uh, like you want to go into wildlife monitoring with ai and all those things there are multiple other data sets too but while we were talking about responsible ai so 
we also need to think of responsible sustainability and it's not that when we talk about responsible ai it is apart from sustainability sustainability is also about getting all of us together to achieve a goal right we should not we should not have models which are biased we should not have the models which are not interpretable so that's also a component of making the models sustainable so while we are doing all of this let's do responsible ai but also think of the sustainability part while thinking of safety robustness uh, interpretability like diversification of the models diversification of the data sets that you use so that can help you to do data science or ai more responsibly and in a more structured manner but while we are trying to solve while we are trying to put ai to solve problem statements we should always ask these things which can also be a also be a uh, like seed for thinking that whether we actually need ai or not to solve a concern and getting to this point is also one of the component of thinking more sustainable way because if you can brainstorm a lot on is ai actually needed what is the scope and time horizon of the impact that's getting from the ai models and all those things you can compare how the things are B and key consideration ai is definitely not a silver bullet but we should focus on how we can do ai more sustainably and how we can use ai in more sustainable use cases so let us come together and do our bit so that's the hope that i leave this uh, talk with because artificial intelligence is booming so is its carbon footprint so let's take the responsibility to do ai more responsibly and more sustainably and there are few risks that definitely comes up and one of them is the growing impact of ai in the climate uh, in the in the emissions and the carbon footprints that we see but it's like while this is from a sustainable point of view from a responsibility point of view but where is the opportunity lying so this is a linkedin careers report which mentions that the growth in green jobs the green jobs means the jobs that require certain uh, certain knowledge or certain uh, i would say experience in doing things more green in the more green way it's not only about ev it's also a lot about doing a sustainably so this is one of the one of the point from linkedin reports skills report and if you see these are the fastest growing jobs so the top two ai and machine learning specialist and the second one is sustainability specialists so why not use both of them why not fuse both of them because yesterday there was a conversation that would ai replace us definitely it's it's way like it's a little futuristic to speak but definitely the ai job roles the data scientist job roles will evolve and we might see that a lot of job roles might come where ai ml sustainable experts sustainability experts might be the new job role that we can see, think of and a lot of companies have started uh, hiring such people and that's that's it thank you so much for being such a pleasant uh, audience and i hope that we do ai more responsibly and more sustainably thank you, thank you.